Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a very exciting lesson here in computer literacy with Mr. Blumendahl. Um, this is a lesson that may have applicability to both staff and students here at Walden Middle School because we are going to learn how to use Google Forms to make an online test. Not just make an online test, but make an online test that is self-grading and generates all the data tables you could possibly want if you are a teacher. So kids, you're going to get to choose your own fun topics for this, and teachers, obviously, I don't need to tell you um, that this is very, very applicable to what you do on a regular basis. So uh, this is my Google, Google Apps screen. You will see up in the upper left-hand corner, it says Google Apps there, Show Apps. These are all of my apps. Google Forms is what we're going to use today, and if you do not see that on your app screen, all you have to do is go to the Chrome Web Store, enter Google Apps, and you can basically download it and add it for free to Google Chrome. Simple. When you click on Google Forms, you will see this. Um, as you can see, I've already created a number of forms myself. I'm going to delete that one because that's the one I'm about to recreate. These are four tests that I've created in the last week uh, since I went to the Google Summit at McNary High School for my own class to be delivered with Chromebooks. And my um, eighth grade social studies students have already taken the American Revolution exam, so I've already seen this work, and it works amazingly well. Uh, these are all the forms you have to choose from using Google Forms. Uh, assessments, blank quizzes, exit tickets, worksheets, course evaluations, those are the classroom appropriate ones. You can even create RSVPs and party invites in your personal life. And they've even got job applications, customer, customer feedback, all kinds of things. But for our purposes, we are making an assessment. So I'm going to click on assessment. Now this is automatically tied to my personal Google account through the school district. If you're a student, this would be tied to your Google account, and obviously if you're another teacher, it would be tied to your account. I'm going to call this the Sports History Quiz, because we're going to make this a quiz about sports history, so I'm going to put that in the title there, and I'm also going to come up here and put it in the title up here. And so that now becomes my title. And I do not like this banner across the top, so I'm going to change my color scheme. I want it to be blue. Look at that. I now have a blue test. Uh, if I want to get particular fan particularly fancy, I'm going to go up here and enter sports history and see if I can find some images. And look at that. I found some images. And they need to be about 1,200 pixels wide. So if you're choosing an image to go across the top, make sure it's about 1,200 pixels wide uh, before you choose it. Like this one's 1,280. So I'm just going to choose this one because it has the right width. I may not particularly like football because I don't. I'm more of a baseball, basketball person. But for the purposes of what we're doing here, I'm going to save that image to my desktop. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to the color palette, click on it, click on the picture icon, and upload that picture from my desktop, which is right there. And I now have a sports history backdrop to my test. So every student who logs into this test will now see the pictures of sports in the background. And so we're going to put a little blurb here about the test. Let's see what you know about sports. Do your best. Now, obviously, if you're a teacher, this is where you would put the formal instructions or the blurb that describes what's going to be taking place on your assessment. Uh, for name, I'm going to put first and last name because students often just put their first name and you might have three Jose's in your class. So you want to put first and last name, and that goes short answer. This is your pull down menu. You can have short answer, paragraph, multiple choice, check boxes, drop down, linear scale, multiple choice grid date and time. This is a short answer and it is going to be worth zero points. I do not want this to count towards the scoring of the test because this test will score automatically. 
Also, I don't think I need the student's email here because that will automatically get collected at the end. So now we're going to enter our first question, and this is set up as a multiple choice question. So my question is going to be, and you're going to find out my bias here really, really quick. Who won the 1988 World Series? Question mark. Option one, the Oakland Athletics. Option two, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Option three, the New York Mets. And option four, the San Francisco Giants. Uh, just so happens the Dodgers are the correct answer. And we want this to pop. So let's put a picture with it that does not give away the answer. 19, of course, if you really want to mess with your students, you could uh, give away the answer. But let's do this the right way. 1988 World Series. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this in. That's 1989. We want 1988. There it is. Download the image. And now that that's on our desktop, we will load it in right here. You click the picture right there. Choose an image to upload. 1988 World Series, it uploads. And as if by magic, there it is on your test question. Okay. And you go into the answer key. You make sure it's worth one point. You make sure you have the right answer highlighted. And if you wanted to give feedback for incorrect answers, you could actually type in why the other answers are wrong if you wanted. And required means they have to answer it before submitting. And if you go to these dots here and it says shuffle option order, um, that means that these will all get mixed up as students do it. So each student who takes the test will get those questions in a different order. Now. My second question here, you notice these are boxes. Um, this is in a checkbox format, which means that they can choose more than one correct answer. More than one correct answer. So um, I will say, who went to the MLB playoffs in 2016? Uh, if you don't happen to know, as I'm recording this video, the playoffs are underway. So I'm going to enter some correct answers and some incorrect answers. The Seattle Mariners, as much as I might like it if they did, are not. The Los Angeles Dodgers are in the playoffs. Uh, the Houston Astros are not in the playoffs. However, the Chicago Cubs are in the playoffs, and the Cleveland Indians are in the playoffs. So the check boxes that are there are correct. But if I want to change it up, all I have to do is X them, and it will change for me. So uh, you can do that very easily to change your answers by going to Answer Key and just checking or unchecking the ones you want checked or unchecked. But it just so happens that these three teams are in the playoffs. So when I have the square check boxes, that means that um, those are the correct answers. And because there's three possible answers, I'm going to go ahead and make this worth three points because there's three possible correct answers. Okay. So there is also the short answer question. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. And, oh, you know what? Let's put a picture in there. Let's go with the 2016 MLB Playoffs, and I bet we'll find a logo. There it is. Postseason 2016. We're going to save that image to the desktop, and we're going to load it straight into the quiz. Super easy. Don't need to edit the question anymore. Gonna load it straight into the quiz. Where is it? Got to find it first on my desktop. MLB postseason, there it is. Open it, load it in, and it will now pop into the question. All right, so my third question, I'm going to make a short answer. And this one is, um, what is the best sport in America? 
Now, the correct answer is going to be baseball, of course, because that's what I'm choosing for this, but not necessarily so. Um, and if you wanted to give them a, a clue as to the right answer, you could put a picture in there. And because I'm a nice guy, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to save this image as, I'm just going to go ahead and cover over a previous image so I don't have lots of icons on my desktop. And we're going to go to max default. And as if by magic, there's the clue to the answer for your students. OK. Um, and then uh, this will be an extended response question. So I'm going to give it the title extended response. And um, what are three reasons that baseball is better than other sports? And I can have them answer in long answer form. That's where it says long answer text there. Now, obviously, for what is the best sport in America and extended response, it, those are not going to automatically get graded. And I also did not make sure that this had a point total. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a point total of 1. If you don't give it a point total, uh, it will not count into the scoring. And since this is an extended uh, response, I'm going to go ahead and give this a uh, point total of 5, because that takes longer to write the answer. Okay, And also, if you edit the question, you can actually, um, let's go ahead and copy what are three reasons that baseball is the best sport, paste it right there. And then the long answer text would go there. So this is, I think, just a header to give directions when you switch from one type of answer to another. So I'm going to get rid of that completely. And all of a sudden, as of by magic, it's gone. Now, if I want to go ahead and add some more questions, I would go here. So let's go ahead and add a question. It defaults to multiple choice. But there's different kinds of multiple choice. So let's, let's try a drop down. So these are now going to be drop down. So who won the NBA championship in 1977? You think you know where I'm going with this. 1977 NBA playoffs. Let's see if there's a logo for it or anything. There might not be. That's a while back. Well, see, that gives it away. The Blazer Mania gives it away. Um, so uh, let's see what I want to go with. Uh, this will fool them. Look at those old school pictures. So I'm going to get rid of all these across the bottom. And this is a kind of I'm trying to fool them with the picture because neither one of these teams actually won. But I'm going to put it in there anyway. And now this is going to be a drop down. So we're going to put in the Los Angeles Lakers. We're going to put in the Golden State Warriors. Look at that old school uniform there. We're going to put in the Portland Trail Blazers. And we're going to put in the Philadelphia 76ers. Okay. And the correct answer, as I hope you know, is the Portland Trailblazers. So, and we want to make sure that is worth one point. And we want to make sure that it is required. So make sure it's unrequired. And we want to make sure the option order is shuffled. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have now created a test. But we want to create the settings for the test. So let's go ahead and go up here to the gear where it says settings. Click on that. And the first thing I want to do is I make sure I collect the email addresses of anyone who takes the test. 
if when the test is done, I want the results of the test to be emailed to whoever took it, I will click yes on response receipts. So that means that those are allowed. And if this is highlighted, it means that every only um, test takers who want a receipt get it. And if this is highlighted, it means everyone who takes the test automatically gets a receipt. Uh, you definitely want to restrict it to Salem-Kaiser Public Schools users because we want to maintain security. And if you only want the test to be taken once, you limit it to one response. I would do that because if you want to give the students an opportunity to take the test again, all you have to do is go ahead and clear out the results from the first test and it will give them the opportunity to take it a second time. Um, if you clicked edit after submit, that means that students can actually go back and change the test after they've taken it. Generally, if you're giving a test that's going to count for a grade, you don't want to do that. And see summary charts and text responses. Um, if you want to give your students the ability to do that, you can, but it may clue them in as to um, what the correct answers are. But I'm going to go ahead and click yes on that. In terms of the presentation, uh, showing the progress bar shows them how far they are through the test and shuffling the question order if you want to maintain test security uh, is always a good idea. So unless your questions need to be se sequential, that's good. This is where you can record a message they get at the end of the test. So thanks for taking Mr. B's sports history quiz. Exclamation point. You can put any message you want there. If you want to give them directions on what to do next, um, you could do that very easily. And then the quizzes themselves. Uh, this is a quiz, so it will assign point values. Uh, the grade can be released to them immediately after each submission. Um, if they miss a question, this shows them what they missed. Um, if you don't want them to see the correct answers because you want to force them to study, I would unclick that because otherwise restudying for the test is going to be super easy because you're essentially giving them the test. So I don't think that's a good idea. And I do want them to see the point value. So I've now created my settings for the test. You can preview it. This is what it'll look like for the student. And here's the pull down menu. Okay. That's what it'll look like. They'll click submit when it's done. Um, I'm going to go back to here. Um, the response part is the cool part. So I am going to go ahead and take this quiz just so um, you can see how it works. So I'm Mr. Blumendahl. Uh, the best answer, see, notice it's randomized the answers. I know the Dodgers won that year. I know the Indians, Dodgers, and Cubs. Notice how the uh, order was randomized are in the playoffs this year. Um, I'm going to say I don't have time to answer this right now. I will answer later. And then that happened to be the Portland Trailblazers. That's a pull down. Watch me submit it. You want to see my score? Hey, I got 5 out of 11. And the reason for that is the other six points are expository responses. See, it shows me what I got right. It shows me I got all of those right. But it can't give me an answer to that because that's expository. It can't give me an answer to that, so that's expository. So there's one point, there's six points, but I did get the last one right. So that shows me that the quiz works. And if I go back to the quiz, it shows me my one response on the bar graph. And if I click on individual, it will show me my exact test. Okay, summary. So. Uh, the bar graph is particularly cool, and this is where I'm going to go um, back to my Google Forms here. It's particularly cool when you have uh, lots of students taking your test. So I've just given my American Revolution um, test in my class, um, and I have received thus far, you're about to see it, 75 responses. So the bar graph in this particular case is extremely helpful shows me my range, my average, my median, 
uh, giving me lots of data. It shows me the most missed questions. Lots of data. And obviously, this is only for your multiple choice pull down um, that can be graded. But this is automatically generated. You do not have to lift a finger to get this data. It takes the email of everyone who took the quiz or the test. It even pulls names. Uh, and I'm not going to go into, Mr. Lario still hasn't taken this test, by the way. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and um, get into too many student names there. But this is what the data table looks like when you're done. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I, I should not have to go into how meaningful this can be uh, if you are a teacher and you have access to Chromebooks or you have access to the computer lab in terms of the effort goes into creating the test. The effort does not go into grading it except for your short answer and expository responses. So if you're trying to generate data, this is an amazing way to get it and to make your life easier. And it's a lot more user friendly for kids and just generally amazing. So with that, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off. And hopefully this is useful to you. If you're in my class, it's going to be useful because you're going to have to create your own test or quiz using Google Forms. And if you're a teacher, I probably shouldn't have to explain to you why this is useful. This can truly transform what we do in our classrooms. And with that, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off until next time. Have a nice day.